In this tutorial, we use data from the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Association, or NOAA, to visualize which areas in a local environment will be submerged from storm surges associated with hurricanes of different strengths, speeds, and other characteristics. We'll discuss using the Slosh Display program from NOAA, how to download, install, and update it. Then we'll use this free program to model surge from specific storm parameters and export the results to a new shapefile. This shapefile will be further processed and converted to a raster file. The raster calculator will allow us to combine this with a digital elevation model, or DEM, to determine which parts of our study area will be submerged by these modeled storm surges. As always, timestamps are available in the description so you can jump from section to section. Okay, let's get started. See the description for a link to the download page for the Slosh Display Program. I'd recommend reading the text on this page to familiarize yourself more fully with the slosh model and what it does. A slosh model is basically a more sophisticated way to model storm surge than simple bathtub modeling, which only raises the level of water across an entire landscape without taking into account local geophysical features. Slosh modeling provides a more accurate representation of which areas will be impacted by storm surge and to what degree by taking local geophysical features into account. So now much of this is actually summarized in the talks section down here, which includes a series of PowerPoint files discussing various aspects of slosh modeling, uh, storm surge, and the slosh display program itself. To download the program, navigate to the bottom of the page and click the link labeled here. And this will actually take you to another page, a registration page. So by submitting your email, you agree that use of this program should not be used for life or death decision making. Always heed the advice of local authorities in regards to events like hurricanes and related dangers from storm surge. So once you've received the login and password info, you can download the file by clicking on the link labeled this link at the bottom of the page. Now, of course, I've already entered the login information, so it's not asking me for that. Unfortunately, the Slosh Display Program is designed for Windows computers, but quick online searches will provide you various ways of running this program on other platforms like Mac or Linux. This tutorial assumes you are either using a Windows machine or know how to run Windows programs on other platforms. Click the download link labeled SDP Installer for MS Windows. Go ahead and save this to your local downloads folder. And then once that's finished downloading, we'll use that to install the program. Okay, our program has finished downloading, so let's go ahead and click that file. And this will open our install dialog. We'll click through here, and we'll just accept the defaults. Once this is finished installing, click Next, and let's go ahead and start the Slosh Display program. Go ahead and click OK, or this credits dialog box will go away on its own eventually. I'm going to go ahead and maximize the window. And once we've opened the program, we'll need to download some data to run the slosh model for our area. Now we can do this one of two ways. Uh, first, we can do this actually at the download page by going to the Meow Mom data page. And so we're gonna be using Meows, uh, but it might be uh, useful for you to read a bit here about the difference between Meows and Moms. So Meows being maximum envelope of water and Moms being the maximum of Meows. I know that sounds funny. But in fact, you might find different reasons to run one over the other, or perhaps in your own analysis, you might compare the results of running these two um, to help you with uh, your final interpretation. The method we're going to use to download these is actually within the program itself. So click the download link, and we're gonna click Download Meows and Moms. This will bring up a pop-up dialog to download Meow Mom catalog. Once it has opened the download Mom Meow catalog, we can search through here for different meows and moms. And really what we're doing is we're downloading both for different basins. Now you can select all of these, but for this tutorial, you only need to select the CD2 or Cedar Key version two. So this is going to be a basin along the Gulf Coast, the west side of Florida. So click install, you'll have an update bar here. And when this is finished, we can go ahead and exit out. So once this is complete, we're ready to run our slosh model. Before we begin our analysis, I wanna mention that several useful help files exist on the download page. You will want to refer to them after this tutorial to learn about all the various types of analysis that you can complete with the slosh display program. I would particularly draw your attention to the training PDF or the PowerPoint version of this 
on the original download page. These contain a lot of great information and even a couple of directed exercises, one of which even has actual answers. So back to the slosh display program, we need to select the correct basin to run our analysis. And so we do this by selecting the change basin dropdown, and in this case, Atlantic All. This will display all basins in or near the Atlantic Basin. So navigate to the Cedar Key Basin and double click it. So you can actually sort of look through here or you can click on one and then move your arrow keys and you can see the different basins become lit up. So we're going to go ahead and we know that Cedar Key is a little below the initial display menu. And we want Cedar Key 2, CD2, Cedar Key version 2. Double click on this and it will update the map view to only be this basin. We're now able to set the parameters for our storm. And the way we do that is use the select storm dropdown, select storm, and we're going to go ahead and use a meow. So we're going to set the parameters and we're gonna look at a direct hit, if you will, a storm traveling northeast. We'll say category two, and we'll say it's traveling at 15 miles per hour at high tide. So this would be a pretty serious storm to impact this area click apply close out this dialog box and now we have our storm surge analysis our slosh model for this area once this is complete we need to go ahead and export this as a shapefile so we'll do this by going to the file drop down menu save data to shapefile and we'll want to choose a name so i'm just going to simply name this slosh and then click save Go ahead and click OK to accept the defaults. And this is now done. We're now ready to add this file to QGIS and continue our analysis. After we've added the slosh shapefile to QGIS, the first thing we need to do is define its coordinate system, which is NAD83, a geographic or unprojected coordinate reference system. So to do this, we'll right click set CRS, set layer CRS and the EPSG code for this is 4269. So let's select this, click OK, and click OK on the transformation dialog. And now we've set the coordinate system for this. Now we need to export this file, and in the process of doing so, put it into a projected CRS or coordinate reference system. So we'll right click, export, save features as, and let's go ahead and name this something that we can identify in a moment slosh underscore prj for projected now we're going to go ahead and you'll need to always project this into first of all a projected coordinate system but also one that matches your other data and so in this case we're going to use an nad 83 utm zone 17 north and so the EPSG code for that is 26917, and this will match the other data that you download in the description below. So click OK, and then OK again. And this will, of course, add the new layer to QGIS. You click OK through the transformation dialog, and we can remove the old file. Now to symbolize the slosh shapefile, access the layer styling tab and choose graduated from the drop-down box. Select the NE215I2 value. This is the height values for each grid in the slosh display shapefile, which of course records it in feet. Choose natural breaks, and you can go ahead and increase the number of classes if you like. I'm going to take it up to nine because then we're going to select the value that has a 99 to 99.9 .9 value. These are actually the values that have no value. So we can go ahead and delete this. Next, we'll go ahead and select the spectral color ramp, but we also wanna go ahead and invert this. We can highlight all of these classes and go ahead and change the opacity to something like 60. And so symbolizing the slosh shapefile isn't strictly necessary at this point, but it's a nice way to compare the results with your study area. So in this case, you could go ahead and add a base map. And as we zoom into the area, we can see the slosh modeling or the storm surge here measured in feet above sea level and its impact on various areas of the coast. In this case, that portion of Florida's Gulf Coast that we'll be analyzing. So this storm surge 
slash shapefile gives the impression that all areas with values will be submerged. Of course, this isn't actually true. Some areas are higher than the surge waters. So the next and final step is where we'll compare local height values with the slosh shapefile to determine which areas will be submerged. Add the digital elevation model, or DEM, of your study area to QGIS. In this case, we're using a DEM derived from LiDAR data. Now this is available to download in the video's description. You can use other elevation data as well. Just make sure that it has a projected coordinate system matching the exported slosh shapefile and is in raster format. Let's go ahead and zoom to this later. We'll convert the slosh shapefile to a raster file now. Use the raster to vector conversion under the raster drop down conversion menu to accomplish this. Go ahead and use the following parameters. The input layer should be slosh projected, our projected slosh. The field to use for burn in value is that NE215I2. A fixed value to burn will leave that empty. Output raster size units, choose georeference units and enter one in both width and height resolution. The output extent should be set to the layer of your added DEM. Now you can go ahead and save this to a permanent file. I'm going to go ahead and save it to a temporary file. Click run and wait for it to finish, then click close. Now we can go ahead and check these values if we want to by clicking the identify tool and selecting that layer. If we click around, we can see this may look a little strange. We can turn this off or just select the underlying slosh projected file and click and see that we are in fact getting the same values. Now we're going to go ahead and use the raster calculator to subtract the DEM from the slosh shapefile. So this is under the raster dropdown menu, raster calculator. And what we're going to practically do is, in this case, the rasterized layer, because we saved it to a temporary layer, will subtract the cedar key DEM layer. Now we'll go ahead and leave it as a geotiff, that's a good format for this, and we'll just select a place to output. In this case, let's call it cedar key submerged. Now you might label this or even put numbers behind it if you rerun this analysis multiple times so that you can compare them. Click Save, click OK. And now we can go ahead and uncheck the rasterized and even the Cedar Key DEM, the Slosh PRJ. We can also turn off that Google Road and maybe add a satellite base map. What we need to do now is go ahead and visualize the Cedar Key submerged raster file so we can get a better idea of which areas are underwater and which areas are quote unquote dry or at least not submerged. So we'll do this in the layer styling tab. We want to go ahead and select single band pseudo color. Let's go ahead and choose equal interval and I'm going to move this up to just six different classes. Enter a minimum value of zero because everything with a negative value here is feet above being submerged. So we don't need to actually visualize any of those. Use the blues color ramp, which is already selected here. And then finally check the box next to clip out of range values. Finally, you might want to ramp up the opacity a bit as well. And now you've got a very easy to understand visual representation of which areas will be submerged and which areas will not be submerged. So you can repeat this process and compare the results to determine which areas and by extension which cultural heritage resources will be impacted by what kinds of storms. Now a final reminder, your use of the slosh display program should never supersede local experts or their advice during a potential event leading to storm surge. Instead, use this tool and the analysis in this video to help identify which cultural heritage resources are at greatest risk from different storm surge scenarios. As always, links to location of the data are in the description. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get future updates. Until next time, keep mapping the past.